Bismillah Rahim. Uh, we continue with the lesson. We are moving to electrical oscillations. An electrical oscillatory circuit has got an alternating voltage flowing through it. And as you know with alternating voltage, it will generate a higher part of the voltage, lower part of the voltage, higher part of the voltage. So it oscillates in form of a wave. It has got a sinusoidal wave. So you have got this one bringing or generating radio frequency currents. This radio frequency currents will also have got the form of a sine wave because of generation from an alternating voltage from the source. So a circuit consists of a capacitor which is denoted by letter C capital and a coil denoted by letter L. Of course, a coil will have to allow current to flow through it. As you give in the power from a voltage, the current will be uh, excited to flow through the system. And that flows through this particular thing called a coil here. And the frequency of the current generated is indirectly proportional to the size of the capacitor and coil. Indirect means they are inversely proportional. If you have got a small capacitor size, and a small coil size, you will generate a high frequency in that particular system. Because a small coil, a small capacitor will charge and discharge very fast. The same thing with this particular coil. If it has got a small size, it will allow for charging and discharging of the capacitor within a very short time. And if it discharges and charges within a very short time, then the frequency of vibration definitely is going to be high and vice versa is true. So the frequency, capacitor and coil sizes are inversely proportional. You move to tuning circuit. Tuning means you need to select a frequency from a range of frequencies sent to your receiver. So a tuner helps to select or to pick. Select is to pick or to take a particular frequency from a transmitting station. For example, radio Argesia has got a given frequency that it emits into the atmosphere. And that particular frequency is transmitted through space. And once it gets into the receiver part of your radio, for example, the aerial or the earphone, the earphone will pick the one frequency that is tuned in your radio so that you can be able to receive the information that comes from radio Argesia at that particular point or time. This is done through a process called resonance, which means the frequency of vibration or the energy of the vibration at that particular point starts at a low value and then it increases with the time as you tune it finer. The circuit of a simple radio receiver, as you've known that a receiver collects or takes frequencies or signals. So you have got here, you have got an aerial an aerial, I've given you an example. An aerial is an antenna. Your earphone that you use in your phone can be an aerial. It collects or picks signals from the surrounding signals that were given by a transmitter into the environment. The aerial can pick it. Once it is picked, it comes into the coil. And the coil is going to help you extract the audio frequency signals from radio frequency signals. So in simple English, this particular section of the receiver separates audio frequency signals from radio frequency signals so that you only receive what is suitable for hearing of your ear so that you don't damage the eardrum. And then the capacitor essentially is as a part of a battery of an electrical system. So it stores electrical energy and gives out that energy when needed or when required. That is the function of a capacitor here. And then a detector will have to realize or know the presence of a wave that comes into your radio system for you to be able to receive the information. Earphone definitely uh, acts like a loudspeaker. When alternating current flows through it, it generates sound that you can be able to listen to. And then earth is connecting an aerial to the ground, to the earth. It helps in transmitting excess charges into the ground so that you remain safe without a shock which can possibly lead to death if you get charged too much. So I think helps to ensure your safety as you use your device. So uh, I, will, I will give you a template at the end of the video. I will give you a summary of the key terms that you have been using here. 
plus their definitions or their meanings so that you check on them also. Thank you. We continue with the lesson. We are talking about energy transfers. So in the whole of this concept, the one remaining, we are going to use the concept of the principle of conservation of energy. And you know the principle of conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created, neither can you destroy energy. But energy can be transformed from one form to another. In this particular case, we're talking about elevation. And from three, you learned about thermionic emission. And you are told that in thermionic emission, you are supposed to heat the cathode, part of the cathode ray tube, and then it releases. The electrons there are excited, they are released, and then sieved through a grid, and then the anode accelerates or moves those particular electrons towards the fluorescent tube, which gives you the information you want in form of pictures and everything that you want. So the potential difference applied across a cathode ray tube of a TV contains electrical energy. Of course, you have to connect, for your television to work, you have to connect it into a socket or to a battery so that it is supplied by some voltage or with some voltage. That voltage has got what is called electrical energy. And once that electrical energy hits the cathode of the tube, the electrons are excited or they gain kinetic energy, then they start moving. So that electrical energy that came from the source, for example, from the socket, is converted to kinetic energy in form of movement of electrons from the cathode towards the fluorescent screen. And therefore, you are going to talk about energy transfers or energy conversion from electrical energy to kinetic energy. You don't destroy energy, you don't create energy. You only change it from one form to another form. This is what we mean in the second point here. This electrical energy is converted to kinetic energy of electrons that move from the cathode towards the fluorescent screen. So that movement gives you the concept of kinetic energy, which is the energy due to motion of matter. Electrical energy is gotten by the formula EV. And E here is the charge in Coulomb of only one electron. This is what you have here, E, small. Electron charge, the charge of one electron moving. Electron that has been excited from the cathode. And then V, capital, is the potential difference or the voltage that was supplied to excite the electrons. So if you multiply the voltage that you supplied from the source times the charge of electrons that are moving, you are going to get what is called the electrical energy that excited those electrons. And the whole of this energy is supposed to be converted into the movement of electrons, which means converted into kinetic energy. And that is why we talk about number two kinetic energy is given by a half mv squared, where m is the mass of the electron moving from the cathode towards the screen, and v is the velocity, because we are now talking about movement of electrons here. So they must be having a speed. So that particular speed is this v here, squared. So you have got mass as mass of the electron and v as the velocity or speed of the electron being accelerated. And by the principle of conservation of energy, kinetic energy, must, ele electrical energy must be equal to kinetic energy. This particular equation is true by the principle, principle, principle of principle of conservation of energy which says that you cannot destroy energy, you cannot create energy, you can only transform it or change it from one form to another. So that electrical energy EV is the same as kinetic energy a half mv squared. Let us take an example here. Calculate the kinetic energy of an electron whose potential difference, that is V, is 25 kilovolts. Take electron charge to be 1.6 times 10 power negative 19. Coulomb, which is a constant, will always be given to you, or mostly. So what is given to us here is E, which is charge of one electron, 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 Coulomb here. Then we have also have got the potential difference 
which is voltage at 25 kilovolts. We know that potential difference, the SI unit of potential difference or voltage is volts, not kilovolts. And therefore, we have to convert this 25 kilovolts into volts. 1,000 volts is equal to 1 kilovolt. And then we have got 25 kilovolts here. That's why we multiply it by 10 power 3, which is the same as 1,000. So 25 kilovolts is the same as 25 times 1,000, which is going to be in volts now. The equation wants us to get kinetic energy. By the principle of conservation of energy, the electrical energy that was supplied to the electrons must be equal to the kinetic energy of the electrons moving towards the screen. And therefore we say kinetic energy is equal to electrical energy. And this electrical energy is given by charge of an electron times the potential difference. Charge of an electron is here, 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 coulomb times V, potential difference, 25 times 10 power 3 volts. Take 1.6, multiply by a number, 25, you are going to get, I think, 40. And then 10, this is base 10, raised to a power. Base 10, raised to a power. And we are multiplying. Rule is that when you are multiplying, you have got base and base, take one base, which is base 10. This base and this base is the same. You take one, and then you deal with the indices or the powers. Because we are multiplying, we are going to add the indices or add the powers. So you are going to have negative 19 plus 3. 3 here is positive. So negative 19 plus 3 is going to give you 10, which is base, negative 16. But 1.6 times 25 is 40. So you have got 40 times 10 power negative 16. Changing this into standard form, you are going to have a decimal point here. So that's why you have got 4, 1, 0 times 10, power 1. To have 4 times 10 is 40. And then times 10, power negative 16, which is here. Again, by this rule, 1 plus negative 16 is the same as 1 minus 16, which is negative 15 here. So our answer, our kinetic energy is 4.0 times 10 power negative 15 joules. That is the end of the chapter of telecommunication. Thank you very much and good luck.